Welcome, everyone. Welcome uh, to our event, uh, Invest in Italy, uh, Business Trends and Current Incentives. Thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, being here with us today and to the online guests that are showing in the streaming. Um, we, uh, we want to thank you for uh, joining us, and we want to thank as well our uh, supporter and uh, contributors to this, uh, this event for uh, Sure, the Consul General of Italy, the Consulate General of Italy in Vancouver, uh, the Italian Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, in uh, Canada West, and uh, our support and partner, the Vancouver Board of Trade, the Surrey Board of Trade, the Asia Pacific Foundation, and Foresight for helping us, uh, um, you know, contributing to uh, to spread the word about uh, this event. Uh, we are the Italian Trade Commission. Uh, the Italian Trade Commission uh, is uh, the agency of Italian government uh, based uh, in uh, Toronto, and uh, we have uh, another office in Montreal and uh, one uh, open in uh, 2023 in Vancouver. So we want to know all the actors in uh, British Columbia and the Western Canada. That's why this is one of our first events uh, in uh, Vancouver about uh, um, investing in Italy. And uh, so we want to share a little bit of insights about uh, uh, perspectives and business opportunities and uh, eventually uh, hear from you after in the networking session. So I would like to introduce, uh, first of all, uh, Marco Saladini our uh, Italian Trade Commission Director in Canada. So please, Marco, join us for your welcoming remarks. Thank you. Check. Thank you, uh, Maria Elena. And uh, yes, um, we are uh, today um, here, um, and, and thank you for being here. We are uh, now a, number, a numerous audience here uh, trying to understand better what is the what is the um, case for investing uh, in Italy, and uh, we, you know who we are. We have three offices, and uh, you can talk to us anytime. But today we have an exceptional opportunity uh, to hear from uh, representatives of companies which already invested in Italy uh, from British from British Columbia, by the way, colleagues in uh, Canadian and Italian institutions and associations, a Bank of Italy weather economist and external relations uh, manager and uh, um, the uh, manager at ITA's investment attraction department. Not to for, last but not least, our investment attraction analyst. So, I mean, it's a, a very good panel. And uh, we together, collectively, will try to answer some questions and uh, shed lights on options that you may want to consider when uh, diversifying your investments uh, and forging new international ventures and uh, collaborations. These questions are in my opinion, mostly three. Why Italy? Europe doesn't lack, as we know, intriguing business propositions, uh, but how is Italy's proposition different? And what can be the decisive factors motivating you to learn more and eventually localize your operation in Italy? Why investment attraction from Canada could be the second question. In what way are the two economies complementary to each other? And to what extent, instead, there is an intra-industry cooperation potential to exploit it? And then, third question, what kind of support can the Italian government offer? From your first contact here with the diplomatic or the trade promotion offices throughout Canada, to the facilitation and subsidization work done by colleagues in Italy in different administrations coordinating with each other, how your experience as an investor will be enhanced and made more timely and effective. So these are the three major questions I have in my mind for today, and uh, we'll hear some answers from the distinguished speakers uh, to follow. And in this, that is the first event of its kind, and we chose Vancouver for, for a reason, and so that could be a fourth question, why Vancouver, but we'll, we'll see. Um, and you can ask more questions at the end, as Mariana was telling us, and during the light lunch, which will ensue, and I hope you can stay and network till the end of our event. Thank you, and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Marco. So I'm... Uh 
welcoming uh, Mr. Consul General of Italy in Vancouver, Paolo Miraglia del Giudice. Welcome, uh, uh, Consul General. Consul General has been, has been recently appointed uh, as a Consul General in Vancouver last May 2024, and his jurisdiction is always uh, the all the other province in Canada uh, West, so Alberta, uh, Saskatchewan, and uh, Yukon. So welcome, Consul General. Thank you, Maria Elena. Buongiorno a tutti. Um, good morning, everyone. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to this significant event organized by the Italian Trade Agency in Toronto in collaboration with the Consulate General of Italy on uh, focused on attracting investments to Italy. Investment attraction, as mentioned before, is indeed a priority within the Italian Ministry for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Strategy for economic diplomacy and growth. It's also key to the bilateral economic relations between Italy and Canada and aligns with the cooperation guidelines set out in the roadmap signed by the two prime ministers on June 15 at Borgo Ignazio during the G7 summit the fact that this event is being held in Vancouver underscores, in my opinion, the special attention and importance Italy places on developing economic ties with the province of British Columbia and more broadly with Western Canada, one of the most dynamic and innovative regions full of opportunities for investment and collaboration with Italy. The favorable outlook for collaboration is also supported by the positive trend in trade between Italy and the province of British Columbia in particular, which reached a value of $1.4 billion in 2023, representing about 14% of the total value of bilateral trade. Moreover, Italy remains the second largest trading partner of British Columbia among EU countries right after Germany. I would also like to add that these positive prospects for development and partnership are further enhanced by the strong connection this region maintains, especially due to its geographic location with the Indo-Pacific area. I hope that today's event will offer potential investors from Western Canada a clear and up-to-date perspective on the available opportunities, as well as the various regulatory tools, public incentives, and support policies provided by the Italian government. These will be supported by the valuable insights of Carmine Porello, the Bank of Italy's representative in North America, based in New York, is it among us, alongside other speakers, and through the inspiring success stories we will share today. In conclusion, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all of you for your participation, in particular to the Director of the Italian Trade Agency in Toronto, Marco Saladini, the Head of the Vancouver Office, Maria Elena Lanzafara, for the excellent organization of the event. I also express my gratitude to Samina Kureshi, Minister Counselor and the Senior Trade Commissioner to the Canadian Embassy in Rome, and the Celso Boscariol, President of the Italian Chamber of Commerce in Canada West for their ongoing and fruitful collaboration with the Consulate General in Vancouver. Thank you for your attention. I wish you all a productive and successful continuation of the event. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Consul General. Thank you for the remarks. And uh, now we have uh, our first uh, remote speakers. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Mrs. Samina Qureshi. Mrs. Amina Qureshi, she's connected with us from Italy uh, in Rome. So good evening, uh, Mrs. Amina. And uh, she's the Minister Counselor, Senior Trade Commissioner of Canadian Embassy in Italy. I hope we have the connection uh, ready to go. Here it is. Thank you. Welcome, Samina. Good evening. Okay. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Bonjour. Uh, buongiorno. And um, first of all, I want to thank the organizers and hosts of this event on investing in Italy, and in particular, Marco Saladini of the Italian Trade Agency in Canada and, uh, and his team, the, the entire ITA team, as well as the Consul General of Italy in Vancouver, uh, Mr. Paolo Miraglia del Giudice, for inviting me to join you today here from Rome to say a few words about the Canadian Trade Commissioner Service in Italy and how we can support your company's growth in the Italian market alongside the Italian Trade Agency and the Italian Government Network. 
And I've got a couple of slides. I can't tell um, if they're if they're up. Uh, yes, so Amina, we can um, we can put a slide oh. uh, up for you. All right. Well, there's the, just, just a couple of them. So um, the first one was just uh, just the introduction one. And um, if you can move to the second one, that would be great. Um, and I just wanted to say that uh, since my arrival in Rome two years ago, I really appreciated the uh, continuous cooperation um, with Italian colleagues on the other side of the Atlantic. And being invited to participate tonight, it's, uh, well, tonight for us, the morning for you all. It's just one example of many where we've joined forces to present business opportunities to Canadian and Italian companies. So I think you've got that uh, that second slide up. Um, you can see that Canada and Italy were, were longstanding and were complementary partners as well as friends. And we're also allies in the G7, the G20 and NATO. And this year, Italy has the G7 presidency, and next year, it's going to be Canada's turn. And as the Consul General mentioned, earlier this year at the G7 Leaders Summit, our two countries reaffirmed our profound friendship and our shared values through the launch of the Italy-Canada Roadmap for Enhanced Cooperation. And it aims to strengthen our relationship, including fostering sustainable prosperity. And in the roadmap, there is a section on trade and investment. And Canada and Italy will seek opportunities to facilitate even deeper trade and investment ties. And today's initiative is an example of working towards this goal. So the next slide, please, that just shows the, uh, shows some, uh, some stats on our, our trade. So Italy, it's Canada's second largest merchandise trading partner in the EU. And in 2023, our two-way uh, goods trade totaled $15.1 billion. And that's nearly 60% higher than in 2016. And that was the year before the Canada-European Union Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement, known as CETA took effect. And that agreement gives Canada and the EU preferential access to each other's markets. And you might be wondering, why am I mentioning exports? Well, today's exporter is often tomorrow's investor in search of new opportunities. And that leads me across the ocean um, from where you are to where I am, to Italy, with its rich history, vibrant culture, and robust and diversified and innovative economy. It's a major global economy and key player in various sectors, including manufacturing, automotive, fashion, as well as food and beverage, just to name a few. And uh, Italy is renowned for high standards in design and craftsmanship with a strong emphasis on quality. And the Italian market, like, like the Canadian markets, is distinguished by its dynamic small and medium-sized enterprises, which form the backbone of the economy. So we'll move on to the next slide. And there you can see just a few examples of some Canadian investors in Italy. And in 2023, Canadian investment in Italy it was valued at $2.2 billion. And as you will learn today, there are lots of opportunities to discover uh, how to grow your business internationally in Italy. And just as you have the team and the colleagues of the Italian Trade Agency uh, in Vancouver and across Canada, also uh, their offices are in Toronto and Montreal, they're there to help you. We're also here on the ground in Italy to support you. And uh, we're very complimentary and we collaborate. So the next slide, please, that just shows... Uh, shows uh, what our team does. So the Trade Commissioner Service team, we're 11, and we're located in two places, in Rome at the embassy. And in Milan, we have a, a new consulate. It opened almost one year ago today. And we help Canadian companies with exporting, investing abroad, and developing innovation partnerships, as well as attracting uh, investment from Italy into Canada. We specialize in different sectors. Uh, there's some of them that are listed there, and we can. But that's not all the sectors that we cover. You can always approach us, even if you don't see your sector on that list, and we can help you with contacts, with market intelligence, connections to local partners, and additional services that you might require once you decide to establish here in Italy. So um, the next slide. That's just the last one with our contact information and also our social media tags. Uh, um, I'm going to conclude here by adding one line in Italian, which I think sums it up um, for the Italian Trade Agency, the Italian Chamber of Commerce, 
and Italian government network, as well as the Trade Commissioner Service and businesses looking to grow and expand. Si va più lontano insieme. We go further together. And uh, that's what this, this event today is all about. So thank you so much for your attention. And I wish you all the best uh, for the event today. Thank you very much, Samina. Uh, we appreciate your, uh, your word in Italian as well. And um, uh, on this note, uh, I would like to welcome our next guest, uh, Mr. Celso Buscariol, the president of Italian Chamber of Commerce of uh, Western Canada. You might know him even uh, because he's a partner at the law firm Western Gopal. So welcome, Celso. Thank you very much, Maria. And uh, grazie a tutti per essere venuti qui questa Martina per uh, imparare un po' degli investimenti in Italia. I'd like to thank the Italian Trade Agency for putting on today's session, and in particular Trade Commissioner Marco Salandini, and it's always great to collaborate with them because we're all in the business of promoting bilateral trade and bilateral investment. And I'll just tell you a bit about the Italian Chamber of Commerce in Canada West. Uh, we cover the three Western Canadian provinces, as well as the Northern Territories. And uh, we're a bilateral trade organization dedicated to promoting uh, bilateral trade and investment between Canada and Italy. It's a non-profit organization, and we've been in existence since 1992. And we act as a catalyst between business and institutions, uh, promoting economic missions, organizing participation of delegations at international trade shows, and providing customized business solutions for Italian and Canadian companies uh, wishing to enter each other's markets. Uh, we're part of the uh, prestigious Italian Chamber of Commerce system worldwide with 80 chambers located around the world, and there's three in Canada, Montreal and Toronto, as well as four in the United States. And, we're, and we also work with the Italian uh, Trade, um, oh, pardon me, the Italian Chamber of Commerce Commission in Italy, and we have a very uh, close collaboration with the Italian Trade Commission promoting business opportunities. And as you've heard, economic trade relations between Canada and Italy are long-standing. Over, we have over a century of immigration from Italy to Canada, and that's uh, developed family relationships, it's developed business rela relationships, academic exchanges, athletic exchanges, and th those are the things that the foundations that often good trade relations or business relations are built are built upon. And of course, um, Karina mentioned the coming into force of the. Comprehensive Economic Trade Agreement, which goes by the acronym of CETA, between Canada and the EU, of which Italy is one of the leading members, has greatly enhanced tra trade and direct op op investment opportunities in Italy for Canadian companies. It, uh, it facilitates access for Canadian businesses to a prosperous Italian market of over 59 million inhabitants. It offers Canadian businesses significant opportunities to diversify their export sales and services, reducing their dependency, shall we say, on mercurial markets or sometimes unpredictable markets, whether it's in the United States or in Asia. And I'm just going to cover about five of the opportunities, the main opportunities that CETA offers, and that, that will form perhaps the basis of formulating your decisions uh, to invest in Italy. You know, first of all, there is the market access for goods and the removal of trade barriers. That's, you know, that speaks for itself. And... Uh, the second item, uh, which is also good, is the movement of uh, personnel. Like you want to move personnel over there, you've made an investment there, and you want your personnel to be able to move there uh, quickly and efficiently to oversee your operations. So, you know, that certainly is a, a great enhancement. Um, the other area is also the harmonization of regulations between Canada and Italy or Canada and the European Union. Again, you know, you're often looking at regulatory barriers as impediments to carrying out your investments, and yet there is a work towards harmonizing the regulatory barriers that exist between Canada and the, and the European Union, and in this instance, since Italy. And also there is um, the ability to participate in public procurement. On an, e on an equal footing with EU companies, and in this instance here with Italian companies in Italy. And that's a bilateral uh, uh, feature of CETA, 
And again, those wishing to make those type of investments in Italy know that they'll be play, uh, working on a level playing field and one that's not discriminatory uh, towards foreign investment. Uh, for example, things like you have the Buy USA program in the United States, which is decidedly, uh, shall we say, hostile to uh, s s some investments from abroad. So those sort of sum up the key features of CETA and the key opportunities that it offers. And I think that when you're listening to the speakers today, when you hear about what they've got to say, bear that in mind and use that to frame your approach to Italy. And you can invest in there with confidence. And of course, we at the Italian Chamber of Commerce, along with the Italian Trade Agency, are very happy to assist you in your endeavors. And uh, we really look forward to hearing from the speakers today about the immense opportunities Italy has, has to offer and the opportunities that you will avail yourselves to invest in Italy. So thank you very much for organizing this session today. I think it's going to be very illuminating and very enlightening for us as we move forward with our investment plans in Italy. So thank you. Thank you, Charles. So thank you very much. Uh, so I invite you guys to uh, move uh, on, the <laughs> on the audience side. And uh, I uh, want to welcome on the stage the, the next four speakers. Uh, first, uh, Carmine Porello from uh, Bank of Italy. I'm going to properly introduce everyone, uh, um, Giovanni, and uh, please join uh, Andrew and uh, Mark Porter. Uh, thank you. Please have a seat with us. Yeah, wherever you want, Carmen. All good to uh, this point. Everything is good. Uh, you, you have any, any question for now, or uh, we want to rem maybe to, to get to the question uh, Later, later on, please uh, save your question for later. Okay, so uh, I'm really glad and happy to welcome to uh, Vancouver for the first time, and I guess for the first time in Canada, Mr. Carmine Porello, the Chief Representative uh, uh, for North America for Bank of Italy, uh, is based in New York. And uh, Carmine, thank you very much for joining us. You're our special uh, guest for today. And so hopefully all our audience can, uh, you know, benefit uh, of your presence here today. Uh, Carmine will uh, introduce uh, the outlook of the Italian economy after the lively post-pandemic recovery. So welcome, Carmine. Your Hi, okay. good morning, and uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, dear Consul General, Caro Paolo, uh, and dear, dear Marco Saladini, the uh, Director of the Trade Commission, uh, all the guests uh, that are uh, today with us uh, here in this room, but also connected, I mean, from other, other places. It's really, it's really a pleasure, I mean, to be, to be here. And um, yes, we have uh, our rep office in uh, New York City, the Central Bank of Italy, and uh, where we uh, mainly cover um, the economy and financial market and also economic policies in the US, but also we act as economic observer for uh, Mexico and Canada. And uh, of course, I mean, uh, Canadian economy is uh, an advanced one, it's uh, really important for our bilateral ties and economic uh, uh, exchanges. And so uh, today I'm, uh, uh, I will try, in my presentation, I will try to share with you uh, what are our views, I mean, of the Central Bank of Italy regarding uh, uh, the outlook of the Italian economy after uh, what has been indeed a lively recovery after the, uh, the pandemic. I probably need uh, my, You're yes, right. was thank you so much, <laughs> thank you so much. So um, first of all, we will briefly look at the outlook of the Euro area. As you do know, Italy is part of a monetary union. So we share the single currency inside uh, the Euro area and so all the economic dynamics there are uh, uh, important, uh, of course, for our country and all the, uh, all the, the globe. 
then we will try to dive a little bit more into some uh, structural issues. I mean, uh, what we really care about in terms of productivity and competitiveness. Uh, we will also touch upon uh, some specific uh, feature of the Italian economy in this juncture. Uh, for example, the National Recovery and Resilience Plan, and what are the main challenges ahead. Then, because uh, it's important, when we, when we discuss about investing in one country, of course, it's also important to look at the financial stability outlook and what are the main issues on the table in, in, in terms of uh, sustainability, for example, of uh, the overall debt, but also of the public and private debt. And uh, this we, uh, we will uh, actually look uh, at uh, what, what is the position of Italy in this regard. So briefly, um, uh, the, the outlook of the euro area. Uh, it, it's important to, uh, to stress that uh, after having stagnated for more than a year, the euro area economy activity uh, grew in the, in the first part of this year. And uh, one of the main drivers of growth has been uh, uh, foreign demand. And uh, uh, the high frequency indicator that we use uh, point uh, to uh, the growth, I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, being there also in the second quarter. Uh, this time we have seen uh, from the supply side the role of services uh, being, being relevant. Uh, it's important to notice that uh, inflation is continuing to fall. And uh, even if we have experienced some fluctuation in monthly data, um, uh, inflation dy dynamic uh, is declining and is going to be consistent with the goal of the, of the European Central Bank and the, of course, National Central Bank that are part of the, of the euro area. Uh, as you do know, the ECB lowered its policy rate in September after having started an easing cycle in June. So few months ahead, for example, of other advanced economy as the, as the US. It's important, however, to bear in mind that for the future monetary policy decision, uh, uh, we have had uh, past rate hikes uh, uh, that uh, uh, will, even in the near future, still squeeze demand, inflation, and economic activity. And that, and, and also we don't have, I mean, we do not have any more only interest rate as the only player in, uh, on, on the court, but we also have the euro system balance sheet, which is actually uh, uh, shrinking. And so this will, of course, uh, uh, you know, um, provide uh, some uh, uh, monetary restriction that uh, the path of easing interest rates we have to, uh, to, 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 to bear in mind. Um, so, uh, so let's focus now on the Italian economy. Again, in terms of juncture, as you can see from the first graph, the gross domestic product in Italy grew moderately in the first part of the year. And again, growth is continuing in the second quarter. There has been a relevant role, especially by the export sector, as you do know, as, uh, as being uh, the, the most important driver of uh, demand uh, in, uh, in the country. Uh, we forecast uh, uh, GDP growth in 2024 without correcting for statistical uh, feature like uh, calendar year, um, those kind of, uh, uh, of um, uh, estimates of about 0.8%. But uh, what I would like uh, more to stress here is that uh, uh, what has been the performance of the country after the pandemic. As you can see in the table in this slide, after the pandemic, the recovery in Italy has uh, been uh, uh, robust, 
and, uh, and it has also exceeded the expectation. It has, it, this has been larger than in other euro area countries and uh, also has been uh, in, in terms of the different areas of the country involved, it has been broad based. Also southern region of Italy have joined, I mean, this, uh, this uh, quite lively growth. Here, here are a few numbers. So between 2019 and 2023, Italy's GDP grew by about 3.5%. I mean, those have been really challenging years, okay, as you do know. And uh, France, in the same period, 1.5, Germany, 0 0.7. Um, so where does this growth, I mean, uh, come from? Uh, so the, the first graph show that uh, the recovery has been mainly fueled by investment and export. The, invest the investment growth, uh, which has been uh, more robust than the other European peers, well, it didn't only involve the construction sector of the economy, which, as you probably know, have uh, uh, you know, benefited from generous incentives, but also the machinery sector. And this tells us a lot in terms of the technological product progress and the expectation of firms about future demand. Uh, I, I always like to uh, remind uh, this figure that uh, if you look, uh, if, you, if we exclude from uh, manufacturing transport equipment, uh, the Italian manufacturing sector is the most automated in Europe. Uh, and here you have uh, the, num the numbers in terms of robot per 1,000 workers. In Italy, 13.4, Germany, 12.6, France, 9.2. We're talking about, of course, advanced economies. A very, very uh, uh, automated uh, manufacturing sector. And uh, in the last years, since 2019, uh, Italian companies have doubled their investment in digital technologies. So, uh, I mean, something is happening in terms of the technological intensity of the Italian industrial sector. sector. The export sector very rapidly uh, increased uh, by 9% in the same period. So more than the potential foreign demand. And why? Well, because we have seen actually Italian companies improving their cost competitiveness and also the quality of their products after the, uh, you know, the big crisis that uh, the euro area economy experienced uh, starting from the global financial crisis and the sovereign debt crisis. Uh, so the industrial sector has uh, uh, you know, s been able to select, uh, I mean, the best operator achieving uh, better cost competitiveness, better quality. And uh, you can see from the lower hand uh, graph, I mean, the black line, uh, it actually shows the dynamic of the export sector of goods, excuse me, the um, export of goods in, in Italy. And you can see that uh, this dynamic, uh, brilliant dynamic uh, in, in comparison with the, the other Euro area country as, uh, was there even before the, uh, the, the pandemic. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the performance after the pandemic has been uh, uh, pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, so it's, it's by no surprise that, of course, current account surplus is widening and uh, uh, that non-resident investors are making sizable net purchases of uh, 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 Italian securities in general, but especially of the public, uh, of the um, ish, um, securities issued by public sector. Um, I, I don't want to dive I mean, more into employment and labor market uh, condition, which, uh, which are fairly, uh, fairly promising. Um, uh, what I want to spend a few, few words on is on the uh, productivity and competitiveness issue. Because as I was saying before, Italy has been able 
to benefit uh, undoubtedly uh, during the post-pandemic period uh, from the expansionary fiscal and also monetary policies that have been uh, adopted, but also from overhauling its production fabric. Uh, um, the, uh, again, I, I, I mentioned before the global financial crisis, the sovereign debt crisis. During those years, I mean, the Italian economy suffered more than the European peers. And what we're seeing now is that uh, uh, our productive system has been able to, uh, uh, again, uh, take advantage, especially of foreign demand, better than, than in, the, in the previous crisis. Uh, this happened because uh, profitability and also capital position of Italian companies improved in this, in this period. And uh, what is really important is the weight of larger firm has increased. Um, and we know that this, this is so important to exploit uh, the opportunities offered by uh, foreign demand and uh, uh, technology uh, uh, improvement. So the National Recovery and Resilience Plan uh, we have been, uh, you know, uh, we have heard a lot of uh, uh, information about the dimension, the size of the re resources involved. Of course, those are important. But what I would like to stress here is that uh, the National Recovery and Resilience Plan commits the country to implement uh, 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 long-term reform at, this, at the same time providing the resources for, moder for modernizing the country, the production system, and the public administration. So we are, um, we have, uh, uh, in, in the central bank, we have made some estimate of the impact of the full implementation of the reform and the investment uh, uh, which are envisaged in the NRRP. And uh, in addition to raising the GDP by more than 2% in the short term, long-lasting effect of, for, to growth, they will come from the productivity increase of about three to six percentage points over a decade. So a very long-lasting impact on productivity dynamic and GDP growth. Uh, is everything fine and simple and uh, easy to deal with? Not at all. Because the Italian economy uh, it, it will be able to achieve a sustained pace of growth if uh, it will be able to deal with the impact of the population aging. And uh, uh, again, we'll, if, if we will be able to uh, speed up productivity significantly. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I will not. I mean, uh, uh, um, dive into uh, the impact of demography, uh, which is significant, and uh, of course there are tools. I mean, to deal with it, especially in the long term. Uh, uh, but uh, at the end of the day, only productivity growth will be able to ensure uh, development. Uh, job of more job opportunities and higher incomes. Let me conclude by uh, uh, looking at some uh, you know, debt and uh, finance sustainability issue. I mean, central banker, we do care about that. And uh, uh, so uh, another trait of the Italian economy you are well aware of is that uh, uh, Italy has a, a, a high uh, debt to GDP ratio. And uh, as you can see, uh, well, this is, of course, I mean, the consequence of the imbalances of the, that are coming from the past. Right now, it's uh, at about 137% uh, of GDP at the end of uh, 2023. This is actually close to the pre-pandemic level. As you can see, it, it, it came down, but still, it, it's higher than the euro area average. And uh, the issue there is that, of course, especially when the central bank are raising interest rate and market, of course, are following, these commit considerable public resources 
to interest payment every year, as you can see by the orange bar in the first uh, graph. And we are taking uh, those resources away from innovation and development. So uh, how uh, can we put uh, debt to GDP ratio on a firm downward trajectory? Well, of course, boosting uh, the uh, denominator of the, of the fraction, so the, 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 the growth, uh, the GDP, and of course productivity, which is a tool to do that, and then continuing to improve the public account, which actually means to reach a fairly high uh, primary budget surplus, okay? which the country has been able to, to achieve uh, in, the, in the recent past, I mean, before the pandemic. So everything points to you know, this kind of surplus I mean, being achieved also in the, in the near future. But, uh, well, this is, of course, I mean, crucial, I mean, to contain the spread. We are well aware of that. And uh, it helps having a high and stable, and I would add, if not growing, share of domestic investors in the Italian public debt. You can see that uh, the non-resident investor, the blue bar in the right-hand panel, is, uh, is uh, at about 25% uh, of the overall stock of the Italian public debt. So it's a, it's, it's a sm fairly stable, I mean, uh, financial asset. And um, uh, to this extent, it's useful to remind, I mean, that if uh, from one side, I mean, there is an high public debt in the country, from the other one, uh, either the firm's financial debt, but also the household debt, uh, is significantly lower than the other advanced countries. And of course, I mean, this helps in terms of uh, uh, sustainability, in terms of the overall financial soundness of the, of the, of the country. Um, so before thanking you, let me uh, stress that uh, uh, being in, in New York, of course, and uh, uh, having, the, I mean, uh, the task, I mean, to follow this uh, huge area, I mean, the center North America with those three uh, important, I mean, economies. Uh, you know, uh, the Central Bank of Italy, we remain available to provide uh, you, I mean, with all the information you may need in terms of the economic and financial development uh, in the country and also to hear from you uh, about uh, your experiences, your uh, ideas, your, I mean, curiosity on the country. Thank you again for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carmina. Really, really great intervention. And um, we want to start introducing the real thematic panel on the Invest in Italy. And uh, uh, we're going to the general remark uh, from uh, Marco Cito, that is our second guest speaker from remote, and uh, is the head of the Foreign Investment Attraction Department uh, in our head office uh, in Rome. So welcome, uh, Marco Cito. And thank you for uh, mm, listening to us uh, up to this time, maybe it's past your dinner time in Rome. Uh, welcome to uh, Invest in Italy uh, here in Vancouver. Uh, thank you all for uh, your presence here today. And thank you, Marco, for uh, Saladini for inviting me. It's a pleasure and also an opportunity. Uh, our work here from Rome is to, to promote uh, our country as a destination for uh, foreign direct investments. And therefore, I, I really appreciate this, uh, this opportunity. And uh, let me also uh, thank uh, Carmine for his, his intervention and the uh, Consul General for his uh, introduction. Uh, attracting foreign investments plays um, uh, uh, a pivotal role in the national economic system. Uh, mainly if driven by um, strategic, strategic vision for future development and growth. Uh, FDIs are undoubtedly key drivers of a country's competitiveness, especially through greenfield investments uh, that we generally seek uh, here in, uh, in ETA offices. And because they enhance infrastructures, create new jobs and increase uh, the national GDP. In the past four years, uh, bilateral trade between Canada and Italy has shown significant and steady growth 
in uh, uh, made in, let's say made in Italy sectors uh, registered uh, uh, nearly plus 28% in exports value from uh, 2019 to 2022. Uh, also, according to the latest uh, data from um, uh, Banca d'Italia, the, the, the national bank, uh, which uh, Carmen is a representative, uh, Italian FDI outflows abroad amounted to 30 billion by the end of 2022, while FDI inflows from abroad totaled uh, uh, about 15 billion in 2022. In 2022, uh, uh, more specifically, Italian investment stock in Canada reached 5.4 billion in direct investments by the end of two, uh, 2023 while Canadian investment stock in Italy amounted only to 1.1 billion. So there's certainly a significant potential to rebalance uh, this situation, uh, especially considering that our country is beginning to see the results of large investments uh, derived from the national, the national recovery and resilience plan that uh, Carmen uh, presented a few minutes ago. Uh, this plan, as you may know, is uh, aimed at building um, mainly an innovation-oriented economic system uh, focused on uh, 13 uh, strategic sectors identified by the Italian Steering Committee for Internationalization. So I'm trying to, to give a quick answer to the first and third question that uh, Marco Saladini asked in his, uh, in, in his introductory remarks, why Italy? and what can we uh, do as a government in order to facilitate uh, the investments in, uh, in our country. Um, the, sec the, the 13 sectors identified by the steering committee are the result of a thoughtful assessment of the industrial development tra trajectories uh, that will characterize our country in the coming years. And Canada, and Canada one of the most like-minded countries among our partners, should be part of this. We think that uh, uh, there is really a, a lot of room to uh, uh, enhance your investments in our country. To achieve this goal, it is, crush it is crucial to provide Canadian investors with an accurate image of Italy's real capabilities. To address this, the European House and Rosetti launched the Global Attractiveness Index, which measures country attractiveness based on objective and quantitative quantitative data. According to the latest available data from uh, 2024, uh, Italy is now ranked uh, 18th out of 146 countries. Additionally, the latest FDI confidence index uh, uh, of 2024 drafted by the Kearney Agency places our country in the 11th place among the 20, 25 most attractive economies globally. Um, Apart from these uh, general indexes that may be a synthetic uh, uh, indicator of, uh, uh, of our attractiveness, uh, our mission at ITA is to enhance Italy's strengths, address its weaknesses, and create value for our country, fostering a conductive environment for uh, investments, driving economic growth and, de and development. In recent years, Italy has established a complex governance structure aimed at strategically attracting foreign investors and simplifying bureaucratic processes, processes to make it easier for them to set up business in Italy. Uh, our agency is part of this governance structure, tasked with promoting Italian excell excellences, facilitating business connections, attracting FDIs, and supporting SMEs through a widespread network of uh, uh, nearly 80 offices in uh, 65 countries covering uh, 132 markets. In Canada, as you know, Italy, uh, ITA operates in synergy with its three offices in Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal. Together with the Invitalia, with CG, we, which is the agency of the Ministry of um, uh, Made in Italy and uh, Enterprises, um, our agency actively works within the framework of the Invest in Italy system. This system under the aegis of uh, the Foreign Investment Attraction Committee and the Steering Committee for Internationalization, supports potential investors from the initial scouting phase abroad to the start of their economic activity in Italy through the one-stop shop 
which provides customized support tailored to the investor's individual needs. Specifically, last year, uh, ITA was directly involved in facilitating 83 inward investments into Italy. Through the significant work of our network of 23 desks and analysts, and of course our offices, one of them is in Canada. These experts scout potential investors, promote investments opportunities, and highlight economic incentives in Italy. On the other hand, Invitalia works nationally, identifying sector-specific investment opportunities and assisting investors in the settlement and incentive granting phases. Uh, real estate is one of the strategic sectors for the Italian economy. It accounts around 25% of the national GDP, and services in, in construction contribute 13% to the total GDP, generating a turnover of about 36 billion and employing 1 million people in Italy. This is why our agency encourages foreign direct investment by promoting public real estate investments through uh, a, 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 a specific portal, the Investing in Italy real estate website, which showcases investment opportunities in both public and public-private partnership properties to the um, to Italian and foreign operators. This uh, virtual tool facilitates simple and transparent interaction between demand for professional investments and qualified real estate investment opportunities selected from Italy's public assets. Uh, Italy also plays a, a crucial role in promoting Italy as a strategic, strategic destination for international investment through its participation in major global events such as uh, bio-international in the United States, uh, the, the, in the life science sectors, uh, MIP in, in France, a real estate sector, uh, FinTech Money 2020 Fair in the Netherlands, and many others. This international participation enhances concrete investment opportunities, opportunities particularly in high growth sectors such as uh, also semiconductors. The organization of the incoming missions to Italy further facilitates productive dialogues between foreign investors and local companies, strengthening, strengthening Italy's attractiveness for um, foreign capital. Amid the continuous progress, Italy achieved a remarkable result in 2023. The number of announced greenfield investment projects increased by 20. Uh, from 2077, it reached 2097 in 2023. This rise in project numbers was accompanied by an increase in total investment value, which climbed from 25 billion in 2022 to 27 billion in 2023. While the number of international financial project deals uh, doubled to 114 in 2022 compared to 2021, the Tata remains stable at uh, 116 in 2023, positioning Italy as the sixth largest recipient uh, globally. Despite these positive results, Italy still stays behind other countries in terms of ease of doing business. Italy's capacity to attract foreign investments depends on its ability to facilitate the establishment of new economic activities by simplifying procedures and re reducing bureaucratic hurdles and red tapes. To, ad to address this, the Italian government enacted uh, the Decree Law 50 from uh, 2022 which established a specific substitute power in cases of administrative uh, inaction involving private investment of at least five, uh, 50 million euros. Assigning this authority to the Ministry of Enterprises and Made in Italy and the Council of Ministers, um, Decree Law uh, 104 of 2023 also provides that for strategic national investments worth at least uh, 1 billion and for investments uh, reaching uh, at least 400 million, the Council of Ministers may appoint uh, an extraordinary com government commissioner in order to be sure that uh, the old investment process uh, uh, takes place is flawlessly. Several further, further simplification have been introduced by the government, including the creation of a uh, specific uh, uh, department for investment attraction and release, and more recently, a unified authorization procedure and specific incent 
incentives for all the southern regions with uh, the so-called single spe special economic zone where uh, whenever an investor wants to come to the southern regions of Italy, which are the um, the ones that uh, can be uh, can beneficiate of the, uh, the, the the highest state aid intensity, uh, they can uh, they can uh, deal with uh, uh, only one uh, uh, public uh, subject, which is it's the the single special economic zone, and be sure uh, not having to uh, find other interlocutors as as the, the single special economic zone will will do all the job for the investor. Uh, business, businesses can gain a competitive advantage through an integrated portfolio of, of financial incentives and fiscal benefits. Uh, the main national incentive scheme is in, in our country is the develop, develop, development contract for large investment with a minimum value of 20 million. Uh, the highest aid intensity in Europe can, re can be reached, as I was saying, in the southern Italian regions, Apulia, Campania, Calabria, and Sicily, in the form of grants and or subsidies, loans. And uh, together with uh, also uh, subsidies in the research sector, it, it can uh, cover up to 60%, 60% of the investment value. Uh, I'm finishing. Uh, uh, dedicated incentive schemes and tax benefits has, have also been activated to finance investment projects in research, develop, development and innovation and to support the growth of innovative startups and, uh, in Italy. Thank you very much for your patience and uh, please feel free to contact uh, uh, through Marco and uh, all, all our uh, uh, delegates there. Uh, our office is here in Rome in order to have any uh, support that you may need for your investments. And I'm I'm staying here despite uh, uh, it's uh, half past eight here in Rome in the evening, but I'm willing to, to hear your eventual questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Marco Cito. Uh, so before to go ahead with the presentation of the thematic panel, I would like to introduce uh, Mark Porter. Mark, welcome. Uh, Mark is the uh, Managing Structural and Engineering Director at Structure Craft in Vancouver. Uh, Structure Craft is a, a creative and architect architectural engineering firm with uh, beautiful and efficient projects all around Vancouver in North America. I personally like the covering roof at the Ambleside, very, very beautiful. And uh, so we would like to know a little bit more about how everything started for Structure Craft uh, uh, to create a new wood uh, engineering. Uh, branch in the beautiful Trento in uh, in Italy. Thank you, Mark. Welcome. And this, this works. Yeah, yeah, everyone here. Thank you, and uh, uh, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I am, um, yeah, privileged to represent our our company and also our office in Trento, which I'll speak a little bit more about. But first, just a little bit about us. Um, change the technology, that's what. <laughs> um, yeah, a little bit about who, who we are as a company, and then, uh, as you asked, a little bit about why we chose Trento. Uh, so we are a company, a family business, um, headquartered here in, in Vancouver. Our factory is out in the lower mainland, in, in the Fraser Valley in Abbotsford. We have an office here in uh, Vancouver, and we have one in Seattle, and then just last year we opened one in Trento. We are structural engineers, designers, um, 3D computational designers, uh, project management estimators, manufacturers, and we also have a construction team, and we specialize in heavy timber, mass timber, and um, many of you may be aware, but uh, Europe is also a really um, well-known kind of uh, center of excellence when it comes to heavy timber. and. Um, and so we as a company have been privileged to work around the world. Uh, this is uh, one of the largest timber structures in the world. This is in China, uh, Tianfu Agricultural Expo, uh, about 750 meters. Uh, it, it's, it's huge, um, a series of five domes, all constructed out of timber. Um, this is also in China, ta Taiwan Botanical Garden, where we have uh, lovely kind of beautiful uh, cantilevering Roofs, again, all out of timber. And we, we uh, manufacture 
This is actually sourced in Europe and then shipped uh, to, to China, uh, as was the previous projects. And so over our history, uh, we've had a lot of links with Europe over the years, different manufacturers in Germany, Austria, Italy, uh, Switzerland, and, and we continue those strong relationships. Um, bridges, so just not just buildings, but also bridges. We, uh, we've done some pedestrian, beautiful pedestrian bridges. This one here is in Banff. We've done two in Banff. We've, we've just, uh, just won one across the Rideau Canal. Uh, in, in Ontario, and we're doing some in the US, and, and again, specialized kind of in that beautiful natural material. Um, this, uh, in the US, um, again, and we, we, I don't want to go through them all, but we, uh, just to emphasize that we've kind of worked around the world creating um, beautiful timber structures, specializing, and, and drawing on the, the wealth of knowledge from Europe. Uh, this, this image here is actually. Um, our product, uh, we're the only manufacturer in North America that does the Dow laminated timber, which is the, the sealing material that you see there. This is um, a manufacturing process that we actually saw in, in uh, Central Europe. Uh, there's, a, there's some smaller manufacturers, and we uh, borrowed that technology, and we started it here in Abbotsford in the, in the Fraser Valley, and we're now the biggest manufacturer in North America of Dow laminated timber, and it takes, um, regular uh, lumber sizes and pushes it together with, with hardwood dowels so there's no glue in this product and uh, we make panels that can be used as floors and roofs and we also make acoustic panels as well and we ship that um, uh, all around the world in fact. Um, and, and then lastly, uh, actually just a couple more slides in terms of our projects just to give you a sense of the scale of what we do. Um, although we're a fairly small uh, family business, this is in Idaho uh, this is a, a basketball arena, and we um, we created this this form. We work really closely with some really uh, uh, well-known architects uh, from around the world to create some some really beautiful structures. And again, this is uh, another project in uh, in China. So, all that said, <laughs> uh, why Trento and why Italy? And so, so um, you know, it, this is our manufacturing plant in Abbotsford, and we. We opened there um, in 2017. Uh, we, uh, the, the founding family, uh, Gerald Epp and uh, the Epp family, have been working uh, in Vancouver for a long, long time. Um, we're part of a, a well-known consulting company, Fast and Epp, um, and then started doing the build, and we, we established this in Abbotsford. And at that time, we had a, um, a couple of uh, Italians working for us. Uh, who, who, who were close to, the, to where we ended up putting an office. But that wasn't the only reason that we chose, chose Trento. Um, when you look at the projects that we've done around the world, you'll see that there, um, we've done a few in Europe, but we've done quite a few in, in Asia. We've done a lot in North America. Um, and, and Europe, for us, uh, was, was a market that we hadn't really touched. And so there was an opportunity for us, it's very competitive when it comes to, to wood. Um, but we had established links over that time uh, using European suppliers, getting to know the manufacturers that are there, uh, and, and really understanding their system. Um, and also, very, very important to us was the center of excellence when, when it comes to academic uh, and, the, and the kind of advancement of, of timber technology, um, mass timber as a material, uh, to create some of the buildings that I've just showed you. Uh, and so a lot of the universities <clears throat> uh, around um, northern Italy, uh, Austria, France, um, Germany, Switzerland uh, have great uh, timber technologies, timber programs, and we wanted to have access to that. And so uh, just a year ago, we, uh, and, and you, a, pi a picture of our small office here in Trento, uh, the two of our members who actually were from uh, Italy originally uh, came, came with a business plan, uh, encouraged by us as to, to how we would set up a business in northern Italy. Um, a beautiful part of the world, and as I said, with access to all of these these things that that are that are important to us. Um, and just to kind of highlight some of those, you know, good distribution, and we touched on some of these things already in the presentations this morning. But but for us particularly, uh, access to the universities, access to some of the manufacturers, uh, Rotoblas, um, uh, Hashlaka, um, and then University of Graz, uh, University of, of Trento. Um, uh, and, and others around the world just really uh, decided for us that this was a good place for us to, to invest. Um, added on to that, and I, I don't think, as, especially as I've been listening here this morning, I don't think we've taken full advantage of all of the incentives that are available to us as, as, a, 
as a young company. Um, but there are a number of which we have taken account of and we have utilized. Um, it's, been, it's been good for us to, to set up there. We actually decided to set the, uh, the, the office up as a branch of our Canadian outfit uh, to begin with, to start off small um, and, and then grow from there. But I think as we, as we establish ourselves, we've gone from a staff of two to a staff of 10 in one year. Um, we, uh, the, the, the staff there uh, are currently supporting our North American work to a large extent, but we're st we are definitely beginning to see more and more opportunities open up for us across Europe, not just in Italy, but out from that Italian base, and our, cl and our clients tend to be from around that, that, that area, the, the Trento area. Um, and, and you know, we, so we're having opportunities uh, from, from that office in Iceland, in London, in Italy, in, in France, in Germany, in Austria. So, so it's been really good for us. I, I'd, I'd love to have some conversations over the next little while about accessing more of these incentives and to, as, we, as we grow our office, as we become um, set up in our own right as, an, as a legal entity, uh, you know, as, a, as, a, as a branch office rather than a kind of subsidiary of our Canadian office. Um, for us, it's been a good decision. It's been a success. It's been a slow uh, growth, and, and we, uh, we're looking forward to extending the ability to deliver these wooden, beautiful buildings that I showed you earlier into Europe. Um, and I'll end there. Thank you so much, uh, Mark, and uh, thank you for all this beautiful um, project uh, that you showed to us. Uh, very, very beautiful. So hopefully we're going to see that soon in, uh, in Italy. Um, and now next speaker is uh, our own Giovanni Carpenteri. Um, welcome, Giovanni. Giovanni is uh, our investment attraction analyst uh, based in uh, Toronto. And Giovanni will present the system of national incentives and support service um, and giving us focus on some promising sector. Welcome, Giovanni. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Consul General, uh, Mr. Miraglia. Thank you to Carmine Porello that fly here from uh, New York. Thank you to Andrew that you're going to uh, meet later. Thank you to my director Marco Saradini, Chuselso, all friends that have been known for a long time and we have been working together. And Mark, beautiful presentation, uh, excellent. Now, um, as uh, all the other speakers before me, um, especially the, the council, uh, Italy welcomes you. So Italy is a really, uh, is part of our master plan to, to try to attract more investment. Uh, FDI, the balance of foreign direct investment is little lower in the sense that Italy as a country for sure export more than no attract investment. So there is a, a big push to try to increase that balance sheet. Uh, uh, my function here will be to go over briefly to what are the main incentives that are available to company that decide to invest in Italy. Uh, as you can see, there are m m four uh, main kind of incentive available. Uh, as uh, Mr. Porello highlighted before, most of these incentives that are pretty substantial are available thanks to the PNRR uh, or uh, Resilience and Recovery Plan. So are funds that are being allocated by the European community to help Italy to recover from uh, the post-pandemic uh, COVID. And therefore, these are substantial. Obviously, these incentives are available, they have a goal. The goal is to uh, modernize Italy to uh, bring Italy to the verge of the new, uh, on the technological frontier. That's why when I'm gonna briefly describe this incentive, you will notice how they have, or must, uh, uh, they shall um, be in certain area or to facilitate certain kind of investment. Now, the first uh, kind of investment is the development contract. This is our main frame kind of incentive is the most substantial in terms of uh, financial help. This is for uh, large investments that are gonna take place. As you can see, this kind of investment are available in sectors that are mostly industrial manufacturing, tourism, agricultural, and environmental protection. Um, the, the minimum investment in order to um, start this kind of investment is 20 million euro. Uh, they, only, they are slightly lower when we deal with uh, real estate. They have to be at the lowest, lower of uh, the 7.5 million mark. This, again, uh, this starts like to be a very 
FD substantial kind of help. Um, these are help incentives gave in the form of um, um, loan or so or uh, uh, grant the difference you know uh, simplistically saying is one is a forgivable loan so you receive you get the money and you cannot run but you know, should stay in Italy for quite some times but the idea is that you know is a, a forgivable loan the other one is grant that you can sorry a loan that you can return to a very very favorable interest usually lower than the market uh, uh, interest now um, this kind of incentive usually they are um, adapted, let's say, to the scale of the of the company that is investing. Um, uh, I'm not gonna, you know, uh, obviously there are the difference between what is classify a large company, medium company, or a small company. Usually the the two factor to be considered are the head counts and the head counts and the overall. Um, overall you know balance sheet of the year but as you will notice from this slide and then we'll go to talk about how the aid intensity will be differentiated more we go to the south of Italy that's as a, re a reason for that but you can see that the, the, the incentive are um, um, higher when we talk to small uh, and medium enterprise where large company usually has uh, when we go to the north of Italy, almost nothing in terms of uh, of incentive. While instead, in the region of the south in Italy, for even for a small company, you can get up to sixty percent or uh, forgivable loan. So basically, uh, just to give an example: an investment of seven point five million in um, in um, in real estate, you can get sixty percent of, uh, for the lack of other terms, of free money in a way. Uh, this is second. This is the second kind of investment. is uh, is a old law is, is named as law eight one eighty one slash eighty nine. This is again uh, I forget to mention all these this investment are managed by Invitalia. Invitalia is the agency, government agency that has been created with the specific scope to manage the funds available for incentive. Uh, uh, this is a um, uh, incentive that are available for um, uh, revamp industrial area that uh, you know they they becomes let's say in a way obsolete uh, so this is trying to revamp that kind of industrial area they are classified they are uh, they are specifically included again the kind of eligible investment that you can benefit are you know, for the production of new unit the the purchase of uh, new units so this investment can be uh, brownfield, like you know, you buy an existing um, structure, you modernize it, or greenfield, so you buy from new and you build on your uh, your own uh, things. This already we went through the form of financial subsidy, uh, mostly again mm -hmm. grant and soft loan, and this, as I was telling you before, these are the aid intensive uh, aid intensivities, and you notice how these incentives are mostly target for, for the south of Italy. Why this? This is uh, because, again, this incentive comes from the, the, uh, the PNRR, so this uh, recovery and resilience plan. So obviously, the region in south Italy um, are known to be a little uh, behind the rest of Europe in terms of, uh, of uh, productivity and uh, to take an assist from uh, Mr. Porello. So that's where productivity needs to, to speed up and revamp, and that's why incentives are more and more substantial in the south of Italy. Uh, this is the Green New Deal. This is another kind of incentive, even if this is more for uh, R&D project. So this is like, uh, while the development contract is more a practical things that is immediate to, to so you can bring let's say foot on the ground this is more on the industrial R&D so this is no immediate in the sense you get the, the money but for a project that is gonna to be uh, available later um, this is what uh, um, uh, Marco Cito from Italy our director was mentioning this is uh, the Italian special economic zone these are incentive that are targeted for eight specific region uh, mostly again south of Italy uh, they they can be very substantial. Again, they target this region because they are uh, lacking, you know, uh, behind. Now, uh, this is also very important. We usually talk about incentive in the terms of a loan or grant, but. Uh, 
we tend, uh, I tend probably not to mention enough, the other kind of help that, uh, that are available. This goes from tax credit, employment bonus that uh, uh, in Italy um, are, are uh, substantial in the sense that the, the amount of money that every employee pay for uh, hiring uh, um, an employee is pretty, pretty uh, high, we call Cuneo Fiscale, but in this case, there are some regions where actually you can go to up to 100% of total deduction. So this is some, for some investor, it's something to really consider because it's going to receive a substantial helps in terms of, uh, of incentive. Then we have the tax credit and the, uh, for capital goods and for uh, innovation and design. Now, um, these are the, uh, the, the main incentive scheme, the way they work. Um, then uh, I took the initiative you know, to, to target, to give you a, a briefly uh, presentation about three sectors that I believe are uh, mostly attractive for British Columbia, known what is the British Columbia or Western Canada kind of um, uh, economic. The first one is life science or biopharma. Uh, for sure, Italy is well positioned in this kind of industry. Uh, you will notice that uh, um, Italy is positioned as second across all Europe in terms of companies that are in biopharma, and number one in that company that uh, uh, produce something to help the biopharma sector. Um, uh, you can see that uh, you know Germany is uh, ranking first, but Italy, in terms of uh, 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 here instead, Italy is first when we account the CDMO manufacturing value. So these are the company that works along with the biopharma to produce product that it can be uh, 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 channel it into the, the service. So in this case, Italy ranked first. Um, uh, um, this is a, a, a pretty overlook uh, of what, um, uh, why invest in Italy in biopharma. One, for sure, as uh, the number showed before, Italy is uh, a number, for, uh, number one in terms of uh, uh, number second for number of uh, enterprise, number one for CDMO manufacturing. Um, there is a strong vocation of our company to export. So so uh, the pitch that I will do for you is that uh, Italy is well positioned, as before uh, Mark Porter mentioned, to the North European market. But um, I would like also personally to consider that uh, Italy is also well positioned to attract and to expand to the African or the sub saharan continent. There are uh, a push also for the Italian government to try to, there are markets that are emerging markets, but Italy is therefore well positioned for that. Uh, another another reason why um, invest in Italy in the biopharma is the number of uh, people active in that sector and the number of uh, graduate from university. Again, another panelist before was mentioning the university and for sure Italy in biopharma um, and the life science in general has uh, an extremely high number uh, of uh, graduate every year that you know. Uh, that eventually will become the workforce that um, an investor can uh, can take advantage of. Uh, and in terms of uh, labor, once we consider the cost of the labor cost of Italy compared to, to the rest of Europe, even if we don't consider technically the Eastern European country that, you know, for sure we cannot compete uh, with their labor cost, but when we compete to the, the one that will range with our, with our, let's say, GDP, Italy is for sure very competitive in terms of uh, labor cost. Um, again, uh, very active R&D department, um, uh, research and development in biopharma life science is very, very present in Italy. And, uh, and again, there is a, um, um, a, a very um, uh, involvement of the, our government to, to push in this sector. Um, uh, this is a, like a, a face, a map that shows the way uh, the, the industrial base is located in Italy. It's evident that for the numbers of um, the color you can see, northern Italy is having the lion's share here. But uh, again, uh, there are two beautiful success stories, or what we call the the, 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 the uh, I think it's called the, the Etna Valley or the Volcano Valley that is in Sicily, around Catania, that for sure is growing in number for attracting uh, this kind of investment. Uh, this is the positive trend of investment in R&D, where you can see that it's up to 1.87 billion uh, euro. 
The second sector that I would like to raise your attention is uh, real estate and specifically tourism. Now, um, uh, as you all will know, you know well, very well here in British Columbia, but even in Ontario and Montreal, Italians are known into the construction industry. Uh, GDP in construction industry is a main driving force still in Italy. Uh, even if we really re recently noticed how service in real estate are changing that landscape, uh, where uh, there is a, 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 an impact on the real estate service. Uh, this is like uh, you show you how the commercial real estate has significantly grown in Italy uh, and uh, to up to 11.7 billion in investment of which foreign investment represents uh, seven percent. So uh, it's, it's not a mystery, you know, it's a matter of fact that foreign companies like to invest in real estate in Italy, probably this is things common for uh, uh, every country. Real estate is a solid portfolio. But uh, this slide shows you how um, a sector like the shopping center that is a commercial retail is receiving uh, substantial attention from the investor. Um, uh, huge uh, Ontario um, uh, investment funds recently uh, acquire like um, uh, uh, Grandi Stazioni, that is an another piece of real estate. Uh, so there is a drive to invest in that sector. Uh, and also, um, what drives this investment in the real estate is the tourism factor. That also we go back to what are the incentives available. So there are incentives that are available for tourism. So we have to find a way where the, the building of, uh, of this uh, structure attract the possibility to obtain this incentive. And tourism is one of that, so the hospitality can be a sector that it can drive an, an incentive. Um, uh, again, we are proud of um, uh, the Italian heritage, the Italian culture, and we are probably, this is a little, I don't know if it's outdated, I, I think we are now fourth uh, more visited country in the world. Uh, so tourism um, uh, is a, a, a definitely like a, an element that to consider. And and um, there is a higher GDP growth. Uh, the last um, sector that I would like to briefly go over is the renewables. For sure, this is a momentum that across all the world we have. We talk about renewable, uh, green energy, uh, um, and all the sector. Italy has created a specific incentive that is called net zero. The, 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 the way to classify or the way to in, uh, obtain this incentive is similar to the first one we talk about is the development contract. So, but this is specifically uh, regarding net zero. So this is uh, aimed to investment that uh, industrial facility for the production of uh, of uh, wind turbines, for example, uh, heat pumps, uh, battery, everything that he can classify for uh, the economy of a net zero economy. Again, the incentive is the same way um, 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 organizing the way uh, the differentiated between large, medium, or small company. Uh, the aid intensity, again, follow the same parameter, uh, lower in the northern Italy where you know there is already a strong strong economy and uh, more instance of substantial incentive in the south Italy and uh, this is for me for today again I forget to mention that uh, I am based along with uh, Mr. Saladini in uh, in Toronto but uh, my desk cover over all Canada in terms of incentives. So feel free, please, to, to reach to me or uh, direct it to our FDI channel, and we are able, happy to, to assist you in every, every way we can. Thank you so much. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you for uh, your uh, speech. And uh, now to conclude the uh, the panel, I would like to uh, present another very promising investment case uh, related to the recent acquisition of Parma Airport, the Parma Giuseppe Verdi International Airport in the Emilia-Romagna region. Um, Emilia-Romagna, uh, Parma is about uh, under 30 kilometers southeast of Milan. And uh, this gate uh, uh, is uh, it's transporting just under, under, un, under 17,000 uh, uh, 
um, passengers in uh, 2022, the Parma Airport, and uh, Vancouver-based Centerline app, which uh, develops the manager airport. Uh, uh, we have the pleasure to have here uh, Mr. Andrew O'Brien, uh, the CEO of uh, Centerline app, and uh, Alfredo Pereira as well. Uh, um, welcome, and thank you for joining us. And we would like to know a little bit of uh, uh, your story. First of all, congratulations, Mr. O'Brien and Mr. Pereira, on uh, their recent acquisition. And so please uh, go ahead and tell a little bit more about your story. Grazie mille, Maria. Thank you very much. <laughs> Prego. Um, buongiorno a tutti. Uh, thank you very much to Paolo, the Consul General here in, in Western Canada. Uh, from the moment we met, I knew that uh, this was going to be a great resource for us, for our company. And so thank you for all the support that you've given us to date. But I feel like we're just beginning our journey. Uh, obviously to Marco and others who are here, uh, on behalf of uh, the Consulate in Western Canada, and I'm also discovering this amazing international development and trade team. Uh, you know, I always say when you come to speak to people, it's a two-way street. Even though I'm speaking, I'm also learning. And boy, did I just learn a whole bunch from all of you on the panel about uh, free money, I think someone said, <laughs> and grants. That's exciting when you're an investor. So Andrew O'Brien, I'm the president and CEO of uh, Centerline Airport Partners. We're a Vancouver-based company. Um, most of my experience, uh, although it started out with Vancouver Airport Services, today Vantage has been overseas. I've lived outside of Canada for about 22 years, worked in many different countries, all related to aviation and airports. Um, so I founded a company with some amazing partners. They're in the US, they're in South America, they're in Dubai, they're in Denmark. Uh, all friends and partners from the industry. And we founded this company together, so we're a group of entrepreneurs. Um, this is our first investment into airports in Italy. And it's, it's kind of uh, just a story I came to tell you today. I, I don't have any uh, slides, although next time I sure will bring some slides. But the story was really about this amazing city in Parma. How many of you have, uh, have been to Italy? Raise a hand, please. Okay, I figured so. And those who've been to Italy, who's been to Rome? Okay, how about Milano? Okay, how about Bologna? Uh, yeah, okay, how about Parma? Mm. So would anyone be brave enough to tell me if you've been to Parma, how did you get there? By train. By car. Yeah, bicycle? Walk? Swimming's difficult to get to Parma, but how many of you flew into the Parma airport? Oh, I was right. It's good to be right sometimes. You know, when we went to look at this amazing city of Parma, it really struck us that we were in the middle of the food valley of Italy. Uh, if you know Parma, you know what I'm talking about with the food valley. Uh, not only do you have incredible global success stories like Grupo, Grupo Barilla, uh, but you also have the automotive valley. And so we're very close to, I went the other day to the Ferrari Museum. If you haven't been, you need to go in Modena. Um, you need to know that there are incredible talents uh, like Mr. Dallara. I think he's in his 80s now, but what he's done at Dallara uh, uh, Autosports has been spectacular. But he's really considered to be like a Parma, hometown. So you have this incredible city um, with so much culture, so much um, industrial activity and development and tourism um, that, that we kind of raised our eyebrows when we passed through Parma and we were told that there was an opportunity to invest into this airport. And the first thing I noticed was that, you know, you have incredible culture and history, great industry, uh, why is the airport not receiving uh, much more traffic? And why are people taking trains and riding bicycles and renting cars or taking taxis to get to, get to Parma? Because if you think about it, it doesn't make any sense. The airport in Bologna, which is about an hour drive away, um, it's receiving millions and millions of passengers. I think 
In 2023, Bologna moved about 11 million passengers. And today, Bologna has a real challenge during peak season, which is almost year round for them. They don't have room to grow. There are restrictions in terms of flights with curfews at night. Um, and, and it's become very difficult during peak hours for them to manage all the passengers that come in and out of the airport. And that includes cargo. So then if you think, well, let's, let's go north or let's go northwest. Let's go to Milan. Well, you have uh, Bergamo Airport outside of Milan. Also a tremendous success story. It's Ryanair's hub in Italy, but very congested now and very difficult in terms of air traffic and how you manage that. So let's go into the heart of Milan and Linate. If you've been into Milan, you know Linate. It's very convenient, but also has challenges in terms of growth because it's in the, in the heart of a very urban part of the city. Um, so you could go out to Malpensa, but it's a little bit further. It's interesting, it's called Milan Malpensa because really it's, it's an hour outside of Milan. But they also have a lot of challenges in terms of cargo and passengers, and they're serving Milan much more than just the European Union, they're serving the world. And so there's Parma, kind of right in the middle of all this. And, and the first thing we did, we said, let's do a demand and leakage study. Because when you find an airport, typically in a smaller secondary city like Parma, anywhere in the world, there's a reason that they won't have a lot of traffic. And the reason is that you don't have a lot of demand or the towns are small. But that's not the case of Parma. And when we conducted our initial look at the airport, we found out that there were 4.2 million travelers who traveled by air in and out of the city of Parma's catchment area. So if you take the center of Parma and you put a, a radius of 70 kilometers around it, 4.2 million people traveled in and out of Parma in 2023, and we moved 125,000 passengers in the airport. So something really popped for us, and, and I like to refer to it as the diamond in the rough. So we saw as investors an opportunity and we started to get to know the city over the last 18 months. I traveled there endlessly, um, happily. And we got to know the folks in the automotive industry and the food industry. I talked about that. And we got to know a lot of the personalities and individuals who really moved the table uh, in the Parma region. And we saw entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, open arms, excitement that we were there, a group who had come with a lot of international airport experience and in how to manage uh, airports with a lot of efficiency, a wow factor for, for the customers. But also we understand how to invest in airports and how to make a long-term commitment to an airport like Parma. And pretty soon we were talking about a term sheet. And not long after that, uh, we went through a, a lengthy due diligence we had to do our work because today it wasn't an easy investment because today the airport loses money. And so if, if you're in the business of making money uh, and you have investors, you need to obviously come with a very strong business case is how are you going to bring operational efficiencies to this, this existing airport and how are you going to turn it into something successful? So starting with that 4.2 million catchment area, uh, we developed, with great partners at Dublin Airport International in this case, um, a very strong business case for the airport. And we went out, Alfredo and I and our team, and we talked to a lot of investors here in Canada and in different places in the world. And as soon as we started to explain it, whether they were aviation experts or not, the story made sense. In particular, people who had been to Parma, they were really surprised at how this airport was underperforming. So thanks to the Italian government uh, at the federal level, we work very closely already with ENAC, which is Italian Civil Aviation. Um, uh, thanks to the Ministry of Transport as well, we're getting to know a lot of people in Rome and, and the ministry there. Um, and then thanks to Emilia Romagna, the region, uh, which as you would know is, in terms of GDP, is one of the highest GDP regions in the country of Italy, making it one of the highest in Europe. Uh, we also found uh, a lot of entrepreneurial um, supporters that were really behind us and were, and were saying, hey, 
if you if you're going to invest as a Canadian company, we, we want to follow you in that journey. And so if you break it down from the federal level to the regional level, and then I bring it into the city of Parma, um, even Mayor Michele Guerra, uh, he's received us several times now in, in the city. Um, they've tried to provide solutions to us, ideas to us. They've introduced us to, to wonderful entrepreneurs, business people, industrialists, all kinds of stakeholders in the city. And I have to tell you, in my 22 years working in this business internationally, Italy has been the most welcoming, the friendliest, the most um, interesting environment to work because they really want us there. You know, sometimes I feel in my career, countries can remain unnamed, but I haven't always felt that in different places in the world. Sometimes I've felt that I've entered some kind of competition against the locals or what have you. That is not our experience in Italy to date. What we have found is uh, just a great spirit of come on in, join us, bring your international knowledge, and, and we're here to support you. Case in point, uh, when you talk about improving an international airport, you have to start by, by thinking about the airfield. The runway in Parma needs to be extended. Why do we need to extend it? Because if we extend it, then we can receive larger aircraft and we can get to other destinations throughout Europe or why not to the Middle East, um, have a connecting flight into Istanbul with Turkish. We have many plans now for Parma, but you must extend the runway. So the region of Emilia-Romagna, along with the support from ENAC in Rome uh, and the support of the city, uh, have given us a grant, free money, that is very interesting. It's a 13 million, this is public information, a 13 million uh, euro grant to help us make that investment into expanding the runway. And we have all kinds of opportunities now that are opening up. Just last week, as a group of entrepreneurs and investors, we increased the, the capital into the company in a formal board meeting, and this is also public information, by several million euro. And by doing that, we're now unlocking access to Credit Agricole, to Intesa Sao Paulo, um, to the government. Uh, we're also well advanced in our application with Alfredo, with Invitalia. So a lot of the things I'm seeing today, we're actually doing it. And so I think, um, I know the only thing between a lunch break and all of you is me, uh, before it gets wrapped up. But I just wanted to share that, that positive piece, and I'm happy to chat after about it. Again, we're very thankful uh, to the Consul General here in Vancouver. We're very thankful to the folks who are working in Toronto, who are working in New York, who are supporting a firm like ours. It's not easy when you go international, and it's not easy to work uh, in different places, but I can certainly assure you we're off to a flying start in Italy. We're very excited about the future of our investment in Italy. Uh, we believe we're going to bring wonderful connectivity and an airport that all the people of Parma, and why not, in Emilia-Romagna in Italy can be proud of, which is a first-class uh, airport that provides great connectivity and great services to the users. And I think that you know this is an opportunity for any of you who may be considering that same adventure um, to take advantage of a lot of the folks who are here in this room um, and take advantage of the many opportunities that, that exist in Italy. Last thing I'll tell you, since we started, and we only closed the deal on June 4th of this year, so we're really just, just getting started um, three, four months in, I cannot tell you how many other airport investors and developers inside Italy have already reached out to me and my partners and Alfredo, and they've told us, um, would you come and look at our airport? Would you come and build here? Would you invest there? Could you operate here? Could we partner in some way? And so I think you got to admit, that's a pretty exciting start. You know, you're three, four months in, and you're already being offered other very interesting opportunities within the country. And, um, and that led to another opportunity now, which is, is, uh, is coming about at another country in Europe for us that we're, we're currently analyzing. Why? because they heard about our investment in Italy. So thank you very much uh, once again. I appreciate it and look forward to, to catching up over lunch.
Thank you so much, Andrew, for uh, really for your insight and for your enthusiasm uh, versus Italy. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. And we wanted just to thank you as well uh, um, from the audience, Mr. Nick Jensen and Rodney Rao. They are representing ONI and um, ONI Group. They are pressuring investment as well in Italy. So wishing them luck for their uh, new ventures in uh, Puglia, another beautiful region in Italy. So thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you, all the speakers and the panelists. I would just, uh, uh, before to send everybody to the lunch in the other room, I would like to know if there are any questions for our panelists or if you prefer to hang out at the networking session and maybe be get a one-on-one -on -one or, you know, uh, if there is anyone, there are some specific question we would like to address to the specific panelists or I would invite Marco for the closing remarks of this uh, 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 session in Best in Italy and thank you everyone for listening and for your participation. Thank you very much. So I think we covered a lot of ground, uh, and um, I don't have so much to add. Of course, uh, there's, there's been uh, um, there's, there have been replies and, and answers to those questions that I was asking at first. Why Italy, and um, why why Canada? Why uh, the, the choosing uh, to tell your secrets or you know ideas or projects to Italian governments so that the Italian government can can help you with with establishing a presence. I think that there's been a very, very strong uh, body of information that, uh, that we have received and that uh, will guide our, our decisions and our interactions, hopefully. So please don't hesitate. And uh, thank you. And uh, let's move over so we can have a bite and continue the conversation. Thank you. Thank you.